Hello again, everybody. I'm Richard Tripp, and welcome to another edition of HU Roundup. And this week, we are joined by the Highlands University Athletic Director, Andrew Ealing, who has graciously you know, come down to Albuquerque and talk about what's going on at New Mexico Highlands University. And I know we have a lot to talk about, but first things first, Andrew, how you been doing? <laughs> I've been doing all right. Pretty busy. <laughs> it's been uh, an interesting summer, to say the least. If to say the least is right, you know. <laughs> We're not going to waste any time. We're just going to jump into this because I know a lot of people who watch our show are very curious to see what's going on, get updates. Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? Are going to be able to play, not play when the players coming in, all those things. So basically, Andrew, I know you said, we talked about it before. You're just going to update us. What's going on? Well, a lot and then a little and then a lot and then it's it's like a hurry up and wait game right now. You know, we, we do a lot of planning for this fall and then we wait and see what changes and then we plan again and adjust and adapt and that's, you know, that's all we can kind of do. So we, it's it's been really good. Everyone that's involved, I mean, our, our President Minner, our administration, our coaches, everyone has been phenomenal in, in this process. and. And really, it's all about the, the health of our students, and that's what's most important. So that, you know, all this planning uh, will be worth it, uh, but, but it is kind of challenging at times because things change. You know, when you took over, you know, back a few months ago in February, I know you were supposed to take over here, but you jumped on board right away, and we appreciate that. You probably came in thinking, you and I have kind of talked about this before, let's go. We're ready. The schedules are in place. And all of a sudden, here it comes, you hit the brakes, you halt. And when we last talked, we were just being introduced to all this. We were still trying to find out what was going on. So now the shock, if you will, has kind of worn off a little bit. Like you say, it's been a roller coaster ride. You know, now, now that you've had a chance to kind of settle in, what's that been like? You had a chance to kind of analyze things. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I, you know, it's it's been it's been difficult to to think about all the different scenarios and, and so we try to focus on the things that we can control and and put ourselves in a position for success on the things that we know that we can control mm -hmm. and then be open-minded with the fact that we're going to have to adapt we're going to things aren't going to be perfect everyone's in uncharted territory right you know th this th this has never happened before mm -hmm. and so we can plan all we want but we need to expect some of those things that, that we didn't expect and uh, be able to adapt pretty quickly. You know, the NCAA, of course, is pretty much like a chain of command type of thing where you have Highlands University, you have the RMAC, you have the NCAA, but then you have the governor, you have the mayor. So again, you're, you're like low man on the totem pole right now because you can schedule all you want. You can have all the meetings in the world and you know this better than I do, of course. The constant meetings with the RMAC, the constant meetings with the NCAA, and I'm sure the governor, you know, that changes pretty much periodically as well. Well, th there's no doubt about it. And if you think, of, for the most part, NCAA is, is giving the conferences the freedom to figure out what's best for each conference. I mean, each, each area of the country is a little bit different. And we're fortunate in New Mexico in the sense that we don't have a lot of cases compared to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the RMAC for the most part, Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, Utah, it, those aren't extremely, uh, there aren't a lot of cases in those, in those states. And so, we're, you know, we have an opportunity to play and, and uh, to, to have a season and, and to do all that. However, each state has different regulations and, mm -hmm. and we are, New Mexico is probably the most strict. You know, we're going to require a mask where South Dakota doesn't. And well, really, we're the only state out of the conference that does. And in fact, in South Dakota, they're they're not going to mandate a mask. And you actually will get uh, in trouble for mandating a mask. <laughs> and so you got two opposite ends of the spectrum. But it is about the state regulations. And when we have visitors or when we go on the road, we're going to follow uh, New Mexico regulations. You know, that, that in itself could be a little bit of a headache, if you will, because obviously, I don't know if we want to touch on it yet. Let's start with the schedules first. Mm -hmm. I know the football schedule before all this was set, the volleyball schedule, all the fall uh, schedules were set. Have you had to adapt or change them in any way? Yeah, we, we've had to, to 
How many times? <laughs> well, it, we, we went through it and so far one time. We, right. we, we knew what our limitations were because they changed those at Division II, changed the limitations. And so we knew that we had to scale down our, our schedules. Uh, and that, you know, for the most part, that wasn't too difficult. For volleyball, it was removing a tournament. Uh, for football, we had to remove uh, one of our football games, unfortunately. Um, for basketball, we're just playing conference, and so that makes scheduling fairly easy because you just have conference. Right. Um, and so that, you know, soccer was already there. Uh, soccer is a little bit different because you're allowed, you know, those those dates throughout kind of the year. You can use them in the spring as well. So. And same with softball and, and, and actually baseball is going to be lowered. I, I feel the worst for our spring sports that already had their seasons cut short and now they're getting cut right. short again. And there's nothing we can do about it. That decision's been made, uh, but that, that is un, uh, you know, probably the worst part, worst thing we've had to handle through all this. But you know, it's been a one-time change and, and hope there'll probably be other you know, changes that we'll have to adapt to once once we get going. I was just going to say that, you know, we're not out of the woods yet with the schedule. And we hope that the schedules don't have to be altered any more than what they already have because, you know, it, it, you know this being an AD for as long as you have been, even being a coach, one game and it can cause a domino effect. You know, mm -hmm. where do we put it? Do we move it? Do we cancel it? You know, and, I, and I'm not sure yet where you are as far as fans. I know that's still, I don't even know if that's in your hands is it, or is that in the mayor's hands, is that the governor's hands? Where is that? Has there been any talk about it? Actually, this week will be the first week we actually talk about fans. And that's, we, we don't know where that's going to be. And no, it's not in our hands. We're, we're going to follow state, city, county, whatever, whatever that, those regulations are, we're going to follow that and we're going to do it to the best of our uh, ability. I think the, the, I'm not worried about our local fans. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about our visitors from out of town who aren't used to the regulations that we're gonna have. And so we're gonna have, you know, those, we're gonna follow masks are required and, and we're gonna follow all those regulations. But, you know, it's the visitors that aren't used to that lifestyle um, that is, is gonna be the challenge. We're gonna step aside here, take our first break on the HU runoff. We got a lot more with Mr. Ealing coming up, a lot more questions, but when we come back, we're gonna meet the family of Athletic Director Andrew Ealing coming up on the HU Roundup. What do you need in a university? For me, it was never really about being a number, another face in the crowd. I needed something more. A university dedicated to anticipating my needs through support could offer me a sense of belonging and promise me loyalty. This is where those ideas are possible. This is where those ideas are true. Unfazed by our differences and driven by our goals, we all work as one cohesive unit, as a community. We are the movers and shakers, inventors and innovators, future leaders and glass ceiling breakers, with classrooms that feel like home and professors who feel like family. Together we rally, explore, and rejoice. We learn about the world, about each other, about ourselves. While leaping over expectations, we push ourselves to move forward, together. Hey, Cowboy and Cowgirl fans, Richard Tripp here. Hey, don't forget to visit our new Cowboys and Cowgirl store online. Go to nmhuathletics.com. Click on the link and order your apparel for New Mexico Highlands University Cowboys and Cowgirls. Welcome back, everybody. Richard Tripp and segment two of the HU Roundup. We're joined by the Highlands Athletic Director, Andrew Ealing. And we got your family with us this yeah. morning. That's awesome. Introduce them. Well, this this is Sawyer. He he wants to, yeah he wants to talk to the mic. <laughs> this is my daughter Brecklin, and then my wife Jody. Jody, oh. welcome. How's how are things going for you? How's the transition? Everything moving in? It's it's been interesting um, since we moved pretty much right when quarantine started. Mm. So we've been together a lot, 
here recently and it's been fun being able to get out and explore a little bit in Las Vegas and the surrounding area. You know, obviously we were talking before the show, you guys are currently living out in the Sapio area, out about 10 miles out of Las Vegas. Nice area out there, mountains, you got everything you need out there. How's that going? It's beautiful. I Even love it food. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. We got, you can see uh, Hermit's Peak from our house and got some space to run around and get these two out of the house and burn off some energy. So. It's been, it's been nice getting settled. And of course, now you've had a chance to visit the campus, been at Highlands. I know you guys came in before Andrew took over. You know, you, you said you were adjusting well. You like the area, like the community of Las Vegas? Yeah, everybody that I've met in the area has been great. They're super friendly, very helpful. It's been, it's been awesome getting to meet some people. I'm looking forward to meeting more as, you know, things start getting opened back up and Hopefully sports start happening. And <laughs> <laughs> you yourself, you were an athlete? I ran track. I was a high jumper at the University of Central Missouri. How'd you do? I did okay, hold on. <laughs> she, she was in that, she was finished ninth or 10th at nationals one year, had some injuries, but for the most part, she's, mm. she's a very good athlete. She won't ever claim mm. that. <laughs> you ever coach? No, that's definitely not in my, not my forte. <laughs> Let's bring the kids in here, yeah. Wes, your, your daughter there first. How are you, how are you liking out there in Sapio? How do you like Las Vegas? Um, you like it? How do you like Las Vegas and Sapio area? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking off camera when we came on and kind of quizzing these youngsters about their favorite team and favorite ice cream and things like that. Who's your favorite football team? Cowboys. <laughs> Change it. He changed his mind. <laughs> How about this young lady over here? Who do you cheer for? The Chiefs. The Chiefs. That's the honest. <laughs> you guys looking forward to being Highlands Cowboys and Cowgirls? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a cowboy. You're going to be a cowboy? I'm going to be a cowboy. I'm still a Cardinal. He, yeah, we see the Cardinal on the side of the Roberts oh. in high school. So he. He's seen that enough, <laughs> so he, th he thinks he's a cardinal already. Oh, you which, like he, that? which you will be. You like that red bird over there? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> you know? I'm going to go stay at the hotel. <laughs> we, we were talking about the St. James Hotel up in Cimarron, of course, which is haunted. Of course, the Park Hotel up the street here in Albuquerque, which is haunted. Jody, you, you like ghosts. I like going and exploring. and I like haven't... ghosts. We like Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found anything really yet, but it's fun to go look around and see all the historic sites and, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get lucky. <laughs> so are you a scary movie officiato or? No, I don't like the scary movies. I'm not all into the blood and gore and all that, but well, the... No. <laughs> of course, you, you were with Andrew, of course, no doubt, when he was at the, the athletic director at Pearson, right? You know, so you being, I guess you could say, the first lady of athletics at Highlands <laughs> University, you know, what's that like for you? Um, it's, you know, it's a little busy with these two, but we're, we both love sports so much. Um, I am a certified athletic trainer, so just being around sports is, you know, our life. and. I don't think I could imagine it any other way. Without sports, we'd probably be bored and <laughs> who knows, but it's, it's a good life. I, I enjoy watching sports. I enjoy being able to go to sports, um, getting to raise these two around, you know, sport teams and just the environment. I think it's, it's awesome. I like being soccer. You do? I like um, playing football. A soccer player and a football player. Of course, Andrew, you were a, more a baseball. Yeah. A head baseball yeah. coach in Pearson as well. I'm Track. more baseball. <laughs> you know, so that, you know, we, this is a pretty well-rounded family here. You know, Joey, I'm going to come back to you just for one last question because, you know, being the wife of an athletic director, I was a former athletic director. You know, it, it's sometimes not an easy life, you know, for a wife because it, it's basically a 24-7 job as we all know but you just hit the nail on the head and said you gotta love sports mm -hmm. is that if let's just say somebody coming in a wife for the first time as a director is that what you would tell her yeah you you have to love your environment that you're in you have to love sports and you have to love being around it um 
and have an understanding that there's going to be very busy times and there's going to be some nights, you know, that he has to be working and doing the athletic director thing and that's fine. If work has to be done, it has to be done because it's for the benefit of the student athletes, it's for the benefit of the teams, for the sports, for New Mexico Highlands. So. And now you've made the adjustment. You're now a cowboy or a cowgirl, <laughs> as, as the case may be. Have you had a chance to meet the other wives, perhaps? Um, some of the football wives and our women's basketball coach, his wife. Right. Um, they're great. Love them. They all seem to be very understanding of sports and athletics. And so I think it, we're going to have a great group of coaches, a great group of coaches' wives. <laughs> um, some, maybe, maybe start a coach's wife? Though. I think we're going to have to. <laughs> well, last question. I'm going to put you on the spot. What's Andrew's best quality of being an athletic director? Cowboy. Cowboy. Uh, I think that he listens and that he truly cares, that he wants the best for everybody. He's going to try to get the best for them. Um, he's going to work hard and you know do what he can to help them out. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming <laughs> on. I'd like to thank his family for coming on. We're going to come back. What do you need in a university? For me, it was never really about being a number, another face in the crowd. I needed something more. A university dedicated to anticipating my needs through support could offer me a sense of belonging and promise me loyalty. This is where those ideas are possible. This is where those ideas are true. Unfazed by our differences and driven by our goals, we all work as one cohesive unit as a community. We are the movers and shakers, inventors and innovators, future leaders and glass ceiling breakers, with classrooms that feel like home and professors who feel like family. Together we rally, explore, and rejoice. We learn about the world, about each other, about ourselves. While leaping over expectations, we push ourselves to move forward, together. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Hey, Cowboy and Cowgirl fans, Richard Tripp here. Hey, don't forget to visit our new Cowboys and Cowgirl store online. Go to nmhuathletics.com, click on the link, and order your apparel for New Mexico Highlands University Cowboys and Cowgirls. Welcome back, everybody, to the A2 Roundup. Richard Tripp, we're joined by Highlands Athletic Director Andrew Ealing. And as we always do on segment three, I want to remind everyone to go to that online sports store at nmhuathletics.com. And Andrew, you kind of spearheaded this thing. How's it going with it? It's been a great response so far. And if you saw with my family, everything that we're wearing today is from that store, including this, this polo. So. It's been a great response, and it, there's so, so many varieties that you can pick and, and choose from and all kinds of types of apparel, not just athletic apparel, but just kind of your everyday casual apparel as well. So mm -hmm. it's been a great response so far. And hopefully only get better and bigger. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Especially as the season gets, gets going. And don't forget also the 81 RMAC championship team. They're doing something. Contact coach. Over at Cibola High School, we gave the, ad the email address last week. We'll try and put that up later on. But Andrew, let's get back to the important business here because there's still a lot we talked about in the first segment, unanswered questions. The football schedule has been adapted. We lost the Eastern game, which is something I know we try to get on for years. What has the NCAA or the RMAC said about scheduling as far as game limitations, travel, anything of that nature? Well, we've been focused on the travel quite a bit because the game schedules have pretty much been set up to this point. Uh, so, so traveling within the RMAC, uh, looking at how we travel, how we stay in hotels, how we enter the locker room space, uh, how do we work with each other's athletic trainers, I mean that, that has all been the focus right now. And it's kind of all over the map as I stated earlier, you know every state's different and every campus is different. and so. You're, we're, we're trying to find that common, 
that, that common regulation for all of the RMAC schools. Um, and we're not there yet, we'll mm -hmm. get there. Uh, but that, you know, that, that's going to take some time and has things changed? I mean, that, that document, whatever we end up agreeing to do mm -hmm. is going to change. So, so it's going well so far. And, and uh, you know, the, the one thing that, that's common amongst all of us is that we want the best for our student athletes. And so with that in mind, that's, that's our focus. Let's talk about that. Obviously, we know, I believe it's July 15th, football July players 18. and then from there it goes. Yeah. So what is the plan for when our athletes do return? Yeah, so July 18th is when we're going to set kind of the, the mandatory two-week quarantine for our student athletes. And, you know, just recently, it used to be just flying into the state, and now it's basically dry. We're, we're going to quarantine everyone. Mm -hmm. And masks are going to be required everywhere. We're, we're communicating with our housing and with uh, with our, our, our dining services and um uh, our, our local uh, doctors and El Centro Family Health has been extremely helpful. They've been a great partner in all this. We're going to test our student athletes. Uh, we're, we're working on, uh, with housing, kind of creating these clusters with our student athletes. And that's going to allow us to have kind of the safest um, environment for our student athletes and our staff and our fa anyone that, that's going to be working with them. So. These clusters are going to kind of do everything together for the most part. They're going to eat together. They're going to train together. And if someone ends up positive or ends up having symptoms or whatever, that cluster is going to kind of self-isolate together and quarantine together. Uh, and, and that's going to help prevent the spread. At least that's, that's the theory. So this is something that's going to, again, it's a working document. It, it's going to continue to evolve, uh, but that's kind of the plan right now. And, uh, you know, the, when it comes down to it, athletics is athletics, and there's going to be a lot of um, physicality to it that right. we can't we can't avoid. Uh, but trying to do everything we can to help spread if there is a a positive case. And as you've as you've seen, I mean, we've all seen a lot of the Division One athletes come back to campus, and I, I, almost every campus is having at least one positive, but they right. don't know they have it. And that's the other piece of this is that student athletes, if you think about it, 18 to 22 year olds and their student athletes are in good shape, they probably aren't showing symptoms if they have it. And they're probably the least risk group of people in the world, Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And so uh, that's, that's kind of the, the scary part of it is that, you know, it could possibly, um, they could have uh, uh, COVID and we, we wouldn't know it, but we're trying to take every precaution possible to prevent it from, from moving on and to make sure our student athletes are healthy. You know, I don't, at this point, being that classes aren't supposed to start for another couple of months, is there a plan in place or been talked about come August? Because if we do allow students back on, that could change things. Where you house them, mm -hmm. how you house them, et cetera. Or is that something you know we haven't really discussed yet? Yeah, we we're certainly in discussion. Nothing's been finalized. Right, you can't. Um, <laughs> and and you know there's still a lot to work again when our when our student athletes show up. Football will show up on the 18th, uh, and then August 1st is when uh, we plan on the remaining fall sports to arrive prior to their be able to start practice two weeks later. Um, but there is a lot of discussion. Housing, that, all that's going to evolve mm -hmm. so much and you know, another outbreak or, or uh, some positive case. I mean, it kind of depends on on the situation, but um, you know, that every, yeah, everything's up for discussion right now. Nothing's final. You know, just a couple more questions. Are, are athletes going to be allowed to live off campus or do you want them on campus? Well, that's been a discussion that we've talked about <laughs> quite a bit. Um, as of right now, they're going to be both. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have both. And, and uh, that's just, quite frankly, we don't have the capacity to be able to house all of our student athletes and then all of our general students. So it's, that's going to be, um, again, continued discussion. And, and um, you know, hopefully we're doing everything we can to keep our student athletes safe and our staff safe, faculty safe, the community safe. I mean, we, we understand there's, there's more responsibility on just our student athletes in this mm -hmm. situation. It, it, it goes beyond our student athletes, beyond athletics. It's part of the community and we want to make sure that we're keeping the community safe as well. Well, I know we can go on and on and on because mm -hmm. it's going to change or right now, but let's get to our favorite segment of the show in the saddle. 
Of course, Mr. Ealing has not been, and this is all his idea, by the way, <laughs> but he texted me one day and said, I want you to come up with questions. So now I'm going to pose the questions to him that he asked me to put together. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's start you <laughs> off like we always say, red or green? Green. Hot green. or mild? Um, I, I used to be hot, but now I'm mild. I can't take <laughs> it anymore. <laughs> kind of calm down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Salsa, red or green? Uh, green. You like yeah. the green better? I do like All the green right. better. Favorite I'll athlete? I do both, though. Hey, do I want to tell you, I do both, but uh, green. Favorite I'm athlete? You. Favorite athlete? Uh, I should be more more prepared. <laughs> uh, you know, um, probably Joe Montana. Hmm. Not bad. Fishing <laughs> or hunting? Hunting. Rain or snow? <laughs> well, that's a tough question being a baseball guy. It kind of depends. I'll take snow. Snow. Interesting coming from a guy from the Midwest. <laughs> Your favorite quote? Um, gosh. Control the controllables. I like that one, too. Your hero? Probably my youngest brother. What is that? Uh, he, he went through um, stage four. Um, colon cancer and he didn't make it but I mean he he was a fighter and and we all kind of came together and really admired his his fight in it your biggest strength listening ah I'm right there with you last one one thing you would change about anything <laughs> I have a feeling yeah. I know what it is but <laughs> boy you know I, I want to say there's something we could change with with COVID there's no, I don't think there's anything we can do for that one thing I could change or I'd like to change uh, or um, uh, gosh maybe maybe doing more um, maybe doing more for our student athletes uh, in, in the time that of the uncertainty you know you, you can I felt like we could do everything we could with COVID but um, I think there's always more you could do so um, you know, that, that's a tough question, but all I can think about is COVID and our student athletes and having to get up in front of them and tell them that seasons are over and all that stuff. That's anything I can do to change any of that, I would. Well, I'm going to give you the last word, Mr. Ealing. Anything you would like to address our HU members with? Well, yeah, I, I you know, I, I, we failed to, I failed to bring this up actually earlier, but we plan on doing a, a fundraiser later, uh, either in August or September. And this is something we wanted to kind of bring. Uh, here soon and, and do kind of a banquet or get everyone together, get our alumni together, our supporters together, sponsors, and just have kind of a day that we can kind of get together and enjoy, have a good dinner um, and do some sort of auction. Um, this is something I've, I've done in the past, but given the situation, <laughs> we can't do that. So we're going to try something online. We're going to try to do a show uh, throughout that week and, and have some auction items all online, uh, make it very easy for people to bid online. Uh, but really, it's just about getting engagement, getting engaged with our alumni, getting engaged with our supporters. Um, we'll be interviewing student athletes, our coaches, um, taking that whole week and just kind of focus on on that. So um, stay tuned for more information. We'll hope to have that soon. To be continued. Yep, <laughs> that's right. At least. Well, let's hope everything goes well. And I know Mr. Lillian will be more than happy to come on later on if something does change, which it will. But in the meantime, fingers crossed, and let's hope for the best for our student athletes when they come in, and let's hope, hope the best that we get the football season and all our seasons underway. Mr. Ling, thank you for all coming right. in, man. It's yeah, always a pleasure. You. Your family as well. Jody, thanks for coming in. Your, your daughter and son as well. That's going to do it for another edition of the HU Roundup. I'm Richard Tripp. Peace, everybody. We're out. <laughs>